Today, Sports World travels to the Pacific Northwest, to beautiful Eugene, Oregon, possibly the healthiest city in America. As it seems as if everyone here is either jogging, bicycling, or roller skating. When you think of Eugene, Oregon and gymnastics, you think of women's gymnastics. But today, the top male Americans have gathered here for the Emerald Cup in the famed Mac Court on the University of Oregon campus. We'll see such outstanding performers as our current national champion, Jim Hartung. Nineteen eighty Olympian Bill Cahoy. And our recently crowned NCA champion, Peter Vidmar. And we have a sellout crowd here at Mac Court to watch these men along with the rest of the nation's best in the Emerald Cup. And in the floor exercise, here is our national champion, Jim Hartung of Nebraska. Now, Jim usually starts with a very strong first tumbling pass. Let's see here. Good run. Up in the air. Oh, full twisting double back. Very nice. Maybe a little bit over-rotated, but good control on the landing. His second run, the handspring. Front flip with a half twist. Through to an Arabian dive roll. Very smooth. And already we can see the difference in the spring-loaded floor that he is using. There's his press to handstand, Charlie. Very difficult flange press to handstand. On his fingertips. Now he'll cover the rest of the area. With a full twisting dive roll. Now he's going to get set up for his last tumbling run. Jim should do a double backflip here. Good speed. Nice lift. Oh, and he nailed it. Very nicely done. Jim Hartung in the floor exercise. Now here's his first tumbling run again. Notice the great lift. He's way up in the air. Full in, backflip out. Now watch his feet as he lands. Look at the spring in that floor. And the score for Jim Hartung in the floor exercise, a 9.75. And here is Mario McCutcheon, a four-time member of the U.S. national team. Here's Mario's first run. A full twisting double back. Nicely done. A little short on the rotation, but the same mount that Jim Hartung used. There's a front flip in pike position through to a double twisting back. Very nice. The score that he is shooting at is Hartung's 9.75. Mario has a great style and a great presence when he's performing on floor exercise. Notice the nice, tight extension. Very sharp and crisp. There's a straddle pike, front one and three quarter. I've never seen anything like that. His last tumbling run. Nice, easy run. Round up back, handspring, tuck double back. Good job. Still a little short on the landing, but nice and high. Mario McCutcheon of Southern Connecticut State College. Let's look at Mario's third tumbling run again. Notice he's piked and straddled in this flip. It's a front flip, plus another three-quarter front flip. He ducks his head under, and that's death-defying. I don't think I've seen anything like that before. Maybe in time, Bart, this trick may be named for Mario McCutcheon. His score here, a 9.65. This is Peter Vidmar, who beat Hartung out for the NCAA championship. This was Vidmar's first collegiate title. Peter's doing a new mount here. Let's see if he can handle it. A full twisting go back. Oh, no. Over-rotated. It looked to me like he laid back the mount a little bit too far. He didn't take it up high enough. What would that cost? That's a half a point plus a tenth of a point for going out of bounds. Good press to handstand. It's important now that he makes no more mistakes the rest of the exercise. What happens to you mentally? That's very tough, but I think a good competitor realizes that from now on, the rest has to be just perfect. The 
is there a tendency to force from here on in this competition? Yeah, I think you get a little bit nervous and you want to make sure that you're a little too cautious, perhaps. But so far, Peter's doing a very good job. setting up for his last tumbling run here with some nice easy transitional moves and a balance move called a scale. His last run. Oh, a pike double back. Very nicely done. That was the same dismount as the other gymnast, but this time in pike position. A strong finish for Peter Vidmar of UCLA. Here's the mount again. Peter has a good run. Pretty good lift, but he lays it back. You notice he's traveling way back. He lands with his hips behind him too far. And there's nothing he can do then. Peter Vidmar's score, a 9.1. That means that Jim Hartung wins the floor exercise. Here are the official results in the floor exercise. And very predictably, in the all-around, Jim Hartung is in the lead. Here is Jim Hartung, the national champion in this event. And he has already won the floor exercise. In this event, Jim has always been very, very strong and particularly in one pommel work. His mount here, see that? Two times around on one pommel, called a back more. To Bailey. Good rhythm so far. Back travels. Oh, he's a little, oh, I've never seen that. I've never seen Jim really break rhythm on horse at all. He's very strong and usually never gets in trouble. The rest of the exercise is going well, though. Here's his front scissors. He'll pick up back into circles. Good swing. Oh, there it was. I, I really think, Charlie, I really think he lost, lost his concentration totally. I've never seen Jim fall off a horse in competition. Well, he's finishing up with a loop and a half, but I'm sure he's very disappointed. Jim fell off the horse near the end of the routine, but his problems actually started earlier, Bart. That's right, Charlie. Let's look at it here. He's doing the behind-the-back travel, and he gets way forward, way forward, and I don't think he has any choice but to try and keep going with the rhythm. Once he bumps his leg, I'm really surprised he has the strength to pick up back into the swing. Jim Hartung's score, an 8.7. That may be the lowest score he has had since high school. That will certainly drop him out of the all-around lead. In the pommel horse, here is Peter Vidmar. Mario McCutcheon leading the event with a 9.65. Peter begins with loops. Nice extended swing and some one pommel work. Very nice one pommel work. Good back loops on the end. Now he breaks into his flares. Now look at that. A flare on up the handstand. I think he had to muscle that a little bit, but it's a nice, nice attempt. Good tight scissors. There's some more one pommel work. A loop on the end, and a very nice dismount. Peter Vidmar, the 1980 national champion, and a good comeback after the problems that he had in the floor exercise. Here's Peter's midsection of his routine. Now he's going to try something that's relatively a new dimension in this event. Notice from his flared circles, he's going to swing on up to handstand. It's interesting to see how the judges receive this, because it is rather controversial whether this is the direction for the event or not, Charlie. These judges receive it very well. His score is a 9.80. Peter Vidmar takes the lead, and that is the score that UCLA sophomore Tim Daggett will be shooting at. The 1981 World Championships, the first international competition for this young man. Tim is a very, very talented gymnast. I consider him a real go-for-it gymnast. He seems to swing with just complete reckless abandon. Well, a little trouble there. Notice he moves very quickly, though. A hop up to the center, very difficult move. And it's flared circles. So far, going very well. After his scissors, he gets down to the end with a back more. Now his flares, and also a press to handstand. Very nicely done. Tim Daggett certainly works very quickly. I think that's one of the best parts of Tim's routine. Notice here, he's on the end and hops all the way to the center. Good explosion off the horse. Now here he's going to break into his flared circles. It looks like his legs are just cutting through the air. Nice, crisp, and sharp performance. 
Jim Daggett, one of the exciting newcomers on our international scene, giving us depth to the national team. His score, a 9.6. The official results in the Palmer Horse, Peter Vitmar is the winner, making a nice comeback after his problems in the floor exercise. And the very consistent Mario McCutcheon moved from second to first in the all-around. The rings competition has been completed, and here is the winning performance of Peter Vidmar. Peter is now 21 years old. He's really matured into a strength that gives him extra control in this event. Notice he has very nice swing, almost effortless. But the most important thing, he's gotten very strong. Here's a whippet, roll through to another whippet, and a solid L cross. Looks like he can sit there all day. There's a kip back up into the rings. And no problem on the press to handstand. This dismount here is a giant to a full twisting double back in tight position. Now that was nice. Peter Vidmar scoring the rings a 9.85. As we look at the official results, Peter takes his second individual event. And Mario McCutcheon hangs on to the lead in the all-around. But an interesting develop in the all-around competition, there's only three tenths of a point separating the top four gymnasts. The men's vault has also been completed, but before that update, <laughs> let's take a look at the vault 21 years ago. Charlie, here's what they call a hecked vault. No flipping, no twisting, just straight over the horse. Looks kind of funny, doesn't it? It even looks as if I could handle that. Oh, come on, Charlie, I don't think it's that funny. That was considered an optional vault, a winning vault for that matter. Here's another optional vault, just a straight handspring. That was considered difficult for the time. And speaking of difficult, earlier in the vault here, Peter Vidmar had his difficult problem. Peter does a handspring front vault. It's way up in the air, but not enough rotation. That cost him a half a point in deduction, a score of 9.2, and that cost him second place in the all-around. And this was the winning vault of Scott Johnson, who is currently the fourth-ranked gymnast in the United States. Scott is a very explosive vaulter. He does a full twisting Sukahara in laid out position. Nice vault, good landing. Scott score a 9.8, the official results in the vault. Scott Johnson takes his first individual title. And Mario McCutcheon hangs on to the lead in the all around, but with that vault, Scott Johnson moves from fourth to second. And this was the parallel bar event in the 1961 European Championship. Charlie, I'm really surprised to tell you the truth at the level of difficulty in this routine. Notice there's some single bar work there. An L, and a press to handstand. That's very nicely done. They are lacking in amplitude, though, as you notice here with the small front with a half dismount. And in the parallel bar event here in the Emerald Cup, this is Phil Cohoy standing third in the all-around, and he is a former collegiate champion in this event. Bill swings very well on parallel bars. Notice this mount here. It's what they call an inside stalder. All on one rail. His feet shoot through and all the way around to a VC. Now he presses to handstand on one rail. A little break in rhythm there. Oh, a nice diamond off. Good stutz. Notice the springy rails. There's a cast and a trick they call a whippet. A high stutz, front up rise, and a front with one and a half twist. Nice exercise. Good routine for Phil Cahoy. That could also move him up in the all around. Let's look at Phil's mount again. I don't know how he gets his legs through there, but he sure does. Beautiful VC. Good balance on one bar. Phil Cahoy's score a 9.75. Continuing the parallel bars competition, another of the bright young American stars, Scott Johnson, currently second in the all-around. Scott has a very standard parallel bar routine except one part. We'll see that in a minute. He presses on up the handstand. Now here it comes. They'll do a diamond off. But now watch this front flip. Way up in the air. And hop with a half turn, straddle cut back to an L. Now that was nice. There's another press to handstand. 
Good tight line. Stutz, no trouble. Oh, and a sharp oh. double back. Now, remember, Scott needs a 9.8 in this event to take the lead from Phil Cahoy in the parallel bar. Let's watch that straddle front clip again. It's named after a gymnast from Russia called the Kachev Front. And he catches, and ironically enough, he does the next trick named after a Japanese gymnast, a Kato Ha. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? Sounds like an international routine. Scott Johnson's score, a 9.8. He takes the lead in the parallel bar. And that brings up Jim Hartung, the current collegiate champion in this event. Earlier, Jim won the floor exercise. Jim seems to have a real complex about performing on parallel bars. I don't know why he thinks he's poor on this event, but he's pretty good. There's a back toss. Good stood. And no trouble on the Diamondoff. Far, very, very nice exercise. A press to a plunge. Not up to handstand. Now all Jim needs to do is get off with a clean dismount, and he's in good shape. Double back a little bit low, but a nice exercise. Earlier, Jim told us he has a conflict with the parallel bars, but he has no problems today. Let's look at Jim's diamond off again. This is a very difficult trick. You have to do a full turn while posting only on one arm. There's front up rise. Good front toss to a straddle cut to an L. Jim Hartung's score a 9.75. That will tie him for second place behind Scott Johnson's 9.8. Bart Connors Fan Club is here from the Hauser Community Church Youth Group in North Bend, Oregon. Sitting right below the sign. Uh, unfortunately, they did misspell your name, though. <laughs> but it's nice to have the recognition. Well, it sure is. It's nice to get the support any way you can get it, Charlie. And a great group of youngsters here to watch now the final competitor in the parallel bars, Mario McCutcheon, who is leading in the all-around. Mario starts with some underbar work, a cast support. Good stutz. There's a drop peach. A little trouble on that press to handstand there. That'll cost him a tenth or two. Mario looks a little bit loose in his lower back. See, he has to walk. Every time you move your hands, it costs you a tenth of a point. Nice hop pirouette. Double back, a little bit cowboy, but a pretty clean exercise. Mario needs a 9.6 to hold his lead in the all around. Let's look at the diameter off here. Notice he's loose in the lower back, that causing him to move his hands. Here's the back toss. Again, a little bit loose, and he's a little bit out of alignment. A tenth of a point each time. The next event and the final event, the men's high bar. And how has this changed over the years? The apparatus of the high bar has actually changed very little. But the major difference in is how it's performed. You see no one-arm giant swings, no big release moves, certainly not a very aesthetic performance, and yet only a dismount with a single flyaway. So we look for more exciting performances than that. In the high bar, fourth in the all-around, here is Tim Daggett. As I said earlier about Tim's pommel horse, he is really a go-for-it gymnast, and on no event more so than high bar. There's an in-bar stall there. Now watch this. Look at that. A flyaway with a half turn. Very nicely done. Nice stalder work. There's his inverted giants. So far, very nice. Now watch him crank up for this dismount. A full twisting double back in laid out position. That was nice. Tim Daggett of UCLA. Exciting new face on the international scene. Let's look at that Ginger. It's a flyaway with a half turn. Notice he does a very fast giant swing here. Now he'll let go. Do a back flip. One half turn. Turn around and catch that bar. How about that? Tim Daggett's score, a 9.8. He sets a high mark for everyone to shoot at. Next up is Phil Cahoy, currently second in the all-around. Very strong in this event. Phil has been a national champion on this event before. There's a stem to a handstand and a stalder. And that's a heck ball with a half turn. His first release move. 
Now Phil goes into his inverted Giants. Oh, and a nice tight start flip out of inverts. Very well done. He'll swing back up into his giant swings. There's another stall there. Now watch him pick up speed for his dismount. A full in, tuck back flip out. Nice job. Bill Cahoy, he certainly uses his height to his advantage in this event. He certainly does. A very long swing is very helpful in this event. Notice here, nice stretch in these inverted giants. Good extension. Now he releases. There's a pike front flip. And the bar is right there. Bill Cahoy score a 9.8, so he's now tied for the lead in the high bar. He's in excellent shape in the all-around. That brings up the current leader in the all-around, Scott Johnson. Scott needs a 9.65 to maintain his lead. A 9.65 shouldn't be too hard for Scott. He's very good on this event. There's his stall there. Oh, and a one-arm giant. Two in a row. Very nicely done. Another back giant. And there's his Ginger. Oh! Just a little too far out, Charlie. I think he's okay. What will that cost him? That'll cost a half a point for sure. He has 30 seconds to remount. What is he thinking? Well, Charlie, in addition to rattling your body, you happen to rattle your mind a little bit. It's important that he gets his concentration back together and finishes perfectly. He gets back up to the bar with a kip and back into his giant swings. There's a stoop. Oh, he's having a little trouble now, Charlie. It's a little rough here. Looks like he almost gave up. There we go, swinging a little smoother now. There's his giant swings for his dismount. A full twisting double back, and a very nice dismount. Scott Johnson, big problems in the high bar. Let's take a look at these one-arm giants. Nice line, good extension over the bar. Now here's where he got in trouble. He pushed this a little bit too far out, so when he turned around, the bar was just a little too far away. He is all right, but his score is a 9.1, and that drops him out of the all-around competition. And here is Mario McCutcheon, currently third in the all-around. He needs a 9.9 .9 to win. Can he do it? Mario is very good on high bar. There's a good stalder. Look at that, a nice one-arm giant. Two in a row. Beautiful line. There's his release move, the reverse hex. Notice the nice tight extension, perfect toe point that Mario has. Nice. There's his inverted giants. Beautiful rhythm. He hops out the front giants. And there's a heck ball with a half turn. His second release move. Notice the style on his pirouettes. Good giants. Pike double back. Nice exercise. The step at the dismount. What will that cost him? That'll only cost him a tenth of a point, Charlie. 